Welcome back, ladies and gentlemen. This is another episode of 2DW. I am your host, named Bella the Batty. And it's your host here, Shania the Goddess. Oh! And today we're going to talk about setting your kids up for success, which is, I think, is a really good topic. Um, so, yeah, stay tuned. We have a lot. <laughs> So, I want to start this off by saying um, I don't have any kids. Nabella, do you have any kids? I do not have any kids. We don't have kids yet, but we have obviously been raised by people. We have parents. And so, even though we're not coming from this pers perspective as someone who is a parent, that does not mean that we don't have examples because we all have been raised by people and we also have friends who are parents and were raised by people. Right. So, I think, you know what we're gonna to try to do, and at least I, I'm not gonna speak for Nate, but I'll say for me, my, my perspective is gonna be from someone who has heard stories or have seen people who might have had really positive experiences growing up, or people I know who have had negative experiences growing up and how it has affected their adulthood. Mm. Yeah, I definitely agree with Shanae. Um, based where I'm coming from is things that could have been done, well, things that were done that made us successful or things that could have been done that could have helped us be more successful if you weren't successful whether it's me her you or anybody so some like you said some people have had hard lives so where if if this happened i may have turned out this way or this happened so this is why i turned out this way if that makes sense you guys yeah um i want to also say that it, it's interesting when you can defy the odds. Um, mm. For example, I was raised in a single parent home and I'm an only child. So st statistically speaking, when you do grow up in what society considers a broken home, um, and broken is relative, but what they consider a single parent home, you're supposed to be a certain way. You're supposed to be a little more delinquent. You're supposed to be somebody who is, I don't want to say a failure, but you're supposed to be someone who is not as successful as someone who has grown up in a two-parent home. Mm -hmm. But I can tell you that's totally false. Um, I'm also an only child, and people expect for me to have had everything handed to me and expect for me to be someone who doesn't have a true value of working hard. And I can tell you, based off of the way that my mother raised me, um, none of those things are true. So, um, I don't know what, I'm gonna ask you, Nabila. Mm -hmm. Do you know of somebody who grew up in a two-parent home and was, not an only child, but had a spoiled mentality as an only child. And do you know someone who grew up in a single parent home and they turned out okay? Um, I could actually kind of speak from both perspectives for me because um, I am not the only child, but there was one point where my dad was married and it was a two parent home and I was the only sibling there at that time. Gotcha. So I can speak on that perspective to where, um, being that I was not the only child, I did not have the mentality of, okay, my dad's gonna get me this, my stepmom's gonna get me this. I, being that I, being that I grew up with uh, siblings, I was already adapted to. Now, they may have showered me with things more so because I was the only one there, um, but I didn't really, come off as the entitled spoiled kid. I'm over that stereotype because yeah. I'm like, I'm not only, ch I'm an only child and I was never like that, so. Yeah. yeah, so, well, for you, I mean, how, how was it being the only child? That's and a good question. Yeah, I'm, I didn't mean to cut you off. Mm -hmm. um, I would say like, with me being an only child and having um, my mom raise me, my mom and I had a very good relationship, so fortunately, we got along very well, and I was, according to her, I was a very independent child in terms of um, teaching myself things and keeping myself busy. Okay. One of the things that can be challenging for someone who is an only child is knowing how to keep yourself occupied, and that all goes back to the parent because my mother had, my mom was a little strict sometimes, and there were times where I didn't like it, but now looking back, I was very obedient to her because I respected her. Mm -hmm. She was a disciplinarian when it came to certain things, so the foundation was respect me, and my, my whole approach to her was, you're my mom, I love you, and anything she would say, I would do. So she didn't have to fight with me 
to get me to act right. So as an only child, you know, she would say, okay, go in your room. You know, if she was, if she was in the kitchen cooking, she'd be like, go in your room. And I would find ways to just keep myself occupied. And I was very creative as an only child because I didn't have someone there who, if I was bored, I just ran to my sibling and right. like, was like, oh, look at me. I was very much studious in my own world. And I really think that's probably why, as an adult, I, I can handle being by myself and I can handle entertaining myself. Um, but again, I knew that she was a disciplinarian, so there were certain things I was not going to do to disrespect her. Mm -hmm. And I think that having a really firm foundation as a parent with making sure that your child respects you and doesn't see you as a friend. Yes. That's a big one because some pe sometimes parents, you know? Yes. Now, I have a quick segue question into that. When you say you were very independent. Mm -hmm. So, we're up north. I'm from, I'm from Jersey. So, up north, we had what was called the how you put it, latchkey kid. So, you know, your mom, when you get a certain age, you're not, you know, grown or whatever, but you get the key, now it's school, straight home, lock the door, da, da, da. and being that you're the only parent, were you, were you given yeah. that role as well? Oh, only yeah. Only child, yeah. Yeah, yeah, and it's funny because I know people who had siblings and they were a latchkey kid, but they were very needy. Like, mm. they, they came up in a two-parent home, um, they act, you, if you saw their personality and you saw mine, you would think that they were the spoiled only child because they could not handle being by themselves. They were not very disciplined. They always had to be up under somebody. It was pretty annoying. Um, but for me, like there was a time, like when I was in high school, middle school, my mom, you know, they worked till six at night or yeah. whatever. My mom was a nurse. So sometimes she'd be getting off of work at seven and I would be at home from school. But because again, she was very strict and I was very obedient to her. She would just tell me one thing one time, like, okay. This is what's going to happen. You know, don't have people over, you know, da 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 And because I, I, I respected my mom so much, like my mom was my world. So if she would tell me that, I knew that my mom was working hard. My mom had worked two and three jobs at one point. Mm. Very hard working woman. Shout out to my mom. That's where I get my work ethic from. But she worked so many jobs to make sure that I did not have to go without. And I knew that, you know, her being a Caribbean woman, you know, the stereotype of, Jamaicans having multiple jobs. She did that, but she did it where it didn't even, she didn't even flinch. And she would look really beautiful doing it. Like my mom, I just saw the world in her. So because of that respect that she would tell me, Christina's a good child. She's an only child, but she never gives me a hard time because I make sure that I communicate with her about what my expectations are. And she does not set herself up to be my best friend. So when I came to that latchkey kid age, I knew that my mom didn't play certain things and I would do exactly what was expected from me and I would go home, she'd make sure that I did my homework, she would come home and say, I'm going to check your homework and if I didn't do certain things, she made sure that there were certain repercussions of that and it wasn't like she was, it wasn't abusive or anything, but like even if she would tell me, I'm disappointed with you or, That's you know. That's worse than a whooping sometimes. Yeah, you get older. but she let me know and I, and because of the respect I had, it, it wasn't very difficult. Mm -hmm. So, I mean. I don't know. It's interesting because, like, I know some latchkey kids, and they, they, like I said, they ended up being very needy and clingy. They couldn't be alone. I'm like, but you grew up with two and three siblings. I know that some people can argue that's why they can't be alone, but it's like you've always had people around you. I'm the only child. I should be the clingy person. I should be the one who's like, I can't be alone. But I'm not <laughs> like that. Like, what's your problem? Like the impersonation. Because <laughs> it's, it's so whack to me. I'm like, do you know how many times I have to figure out how to do things by myself? because of the situation and then growing up in a single parent home that can make or break you because if your if your parents are divorced or you have a sense of trauma about that you can end up being someone who's just like very needy for things but i i wasn't like that i just i just wasn't like that mm -hmm. so yeah so that that's actually pretty interesting to hear about you know the whole latch key kid thing um so now we want to jump into how parents could kind of mess, well not kind of, mess their kids up by doing certain things or certain behaviors. But we will be right back. Okay. I wanted to give y'all the chance to get to know a little bit more about Bella. And for those of you guys who don't know, she has a TikTok. I do guys. It's so fun. I, I think I'm addicted. Yeah, I think it's like a TikTok and I don't know how to get it too. But yeah, I can't. Nobody gonna read. Uh, okay, talk. for me, it's more so comedy based. I'm, I'm a goofball. Um, more so comedy and like different short stories. Because what I, what I learned is I love y'all, but y'all have the attention 
span of of a of a that <laughs> it's it's small. So I have to get as much funny stuff or content in 15 seconds for it to be liked, comment, and share. Because y'all to just fan, y'all. If it's like a minute or two, y'all scroll right past it. I have not learned that the TikTok ag algorithm. It, it it's real. So, so that takes a lot of talent to be able to figure out what people like in a short amount of time. Where can people catch you? Uh, on t uh, you can catch me on TikTok uh, at Nabella underscore eight one six. I will see you guys there. F follow me. I, I promise I have you laughing. I promise. Download the app, y'all. <laughs> <laughs> so let's jump back into this juicy topic. So when, when before we took a break, we were talking about how what. Things that could be done or said or behaviors that could actually mess your kids up because they exist. So And I think and I also think it's important to like we kinda of talked about stereotypes of like coming from a one parent home and still being able to make it. And I didn't get too much into that because I think um, it just the overall concept is all because someone comes from a, a single parent home, it's all about having the right foundation with your child and making sure that you are a good example. Because I mentioned my mom being hardworking, so my mom was a really good example of what a healthy adult who contributes to, to society look like. Mm -hmm. And because she didn't set herself up to be my friend and she wasn't trying to be on my level, there was a distinct level of respect that I had for her. So that was very beneficial. So I also, like you said, um, wanted to hit on how different different ways that parents can the parenting can really hinder your child's growth and I think like go ahead being your friend you just said it you cannot be that child's friend until they are I would say to their adult and a lot of people joke about it it's like uh, until you can pay a bill about here we're not friends you know what I mean because you have you're gonna respect me you're not gonna sit there and curse around me or you're not gonna sit there and um, dress a certain way around me no you're gonna have that level of respect for me because I'm your mom I'm your dad mm -hmm. once we get past once you're an adult then we could talk about that level of being friends I agree boundaries are so important and I, I would also say that Speaking of the friends thing and not being able to distinguish who the parent and who the child is, I don't think you, I don't think you should be afraid to discipline your child. Um, mm -hmm. I know some parents who, their children are cute, especially when they're little. I'm not, I'm not, and I'm not speaking as a parent, but like I said, I turned out really well, so I have every right to talk about my experience as someone who was raised well. Mm -hmm. um, my mom was not afraid to let me know when I was acting up. You know, if I if I would go into the store and I was acting a fool, if I was running away from her, you know, if I was being too, you know, just boisterous, she had no problem letting me know. Sometimes she would spank me. Like, uh, uh. <laughs> no, for real. But you but you have to. And I know some people are like, oh, that's abuse. It's it's discipline. That's a that's a mixed bag. But I don't think spanking your child is abusive. And there, people from different cultures have that mentality where it's like. I have no problem showing my children the consequences of their action. I'm not talking about being like punching your kid and right. and, and and trying to all you know fight them. That's BDT them, you know. No, right. we're not talking you know, about any of that. They ain't no WWE up in this club. <laughs> like, let's be clear about that. But I do think that it's important to have that sense of teaching them how to how to act properly. And some kids, some parents will be like, you know, I can't I can't spank my kids. When I spank my kids, I feel like a bad parent. I get that, but. I will tell you that a spoiled bratty kid is not cute. You might think it's cute as a parent, but it's not cute to the rest of the world. If your child is going somewhere and they're acting, they're being really, really loud and obnoxious and you're trying to ignore them, what are you, what are you doing? How is ignoring your child acting really, really boisterous? And I'm not talking about a, you know, a teething child. I'm talking about a child who's a toddler and they know how to talk to you and you know how to talk to them and you're ignoring them when you're out in the store with them and everybody's looking at you and you're like, what? I don't know. Mm -mm. Stop it. No. You need to teach your child. Like, that's not okay, honey. Like, you have a conversation with them. What are you doing? Why are you acting like this? But if you're ignoring the problem, that you're teaching your child that it's okay to reward their negative behavior because you're not putting your foot down and saying, mommy doesn't like it when you go into the store and you're crying. You're not going to get the toy. You're not going to get what you want. It's okay. Right. It's not abusive. <laughs> <laughs> because think about it. If you don't correct that, if you don't correct that behavior, they're going to go into the society and we're going to have to deal with them as adults. And then if not, God forbid, uh, 
Jail might have to correct that. You know what I mean? Like, if anything could have, not saying that they will go from being two to now they're a criminal, but you don't know what could have happened had you not correct that behavior. That may grow up, they may grow up to have some type of problem where, okay, I get what I want. And right. my mom said I get my, what I want because she didn't discipline me. Now they're they're an adult and they feel that they get what they want. And I need to say a guy gets with this with the girl and she's like, no. He's like, I get what I want. Now who knows? Say he has a rape charge because he gets what he wants. So correct the problem when they are little. Not saying that they're gonna be a rapist or anything, but you never know. I I 100% agree with you. Boundaries and discipline is something that all kids need because you can't blame the kid like you can't blame the kid if they grow up acting a certain way and their parents did not show them as a child right that the world is not going to give you what you want i have personally seen 20 something year olds you know people who know who should know better who grew up in a two-parent home act like spoiled brats and it's like what were your parents doing to you as a child because you at, the, at a certain point there are certain things you should know you should like, you should have a certain amount of manners you, you should know how to read certain social cues. You should know how to not engage in certain ways. But I can tell you that their parents were probably too soft on them mm -hmm. and were afraid to discipline them. I can look at a kid or an adult for an extended amount of time until they didn't get beaten when they were, were young. And I have to come in and be like, you know, you're acting like this. You should know better. You're 20 something years old. You're 30 something years old. Why is it that no one has ever told you at this point that it's rude to do certain things? I'm not afraid to do it, but that's not my place. Because I don't have time to be parenting anybody. I don't have any kids, okay? But at the end of the day, like, Facts. I will let you know, like, you know, it's rude to do certain things. I'm not afraid to say that. But like I said, if your parent did a better job, we wouldn't have to deal with it. The society. Hello. Exactly. So I also want to transition to, like, I don't know what your thoughts are. Like, when you have parent and children situations where there's, like, competition. So you have a mom who has a daughter. The daughter's, like more attractive than the mom and the mom has this weird competitive insecure relationship with her and she tries to like tear her down what do you oh, think about that i think that's awful that is terrible because that is your offspring you should want better for that child mm -hmm. you should not be wanting to compete with that child you should make sure that you instill all the good things that they need to grow up in this world they shouldn't have to fight you and the world they you should be their backbone yeah. You know what I mean? So I, I think that's just terrible. Like, my mom, she had me at a young age. So it's like, and I go back to the friend thing. Even though she had me as a young age, she didn't say, oh, uh, Nay is my friend. Mm -hmm. It was, you know, she was strict. And as she got, as she, as she got older and had more kids, um, as she got older and had more kids, she kind of got a little less, little less, a little more lenient mm -hmm. because she, the first one is usually the strictest. You get the first one gets it all, right. and then as you get older, you you know more lessons. Now you know with the second one, I know I'm not going to be as strict because right, you learn as you have more kids. Exactly. Kid, so, so like I said, my mom wasn't in competition with me. Right. Like if anything, my mom, excuse me, I'm flattered by her because she she'll say, Hey, Nay, I'm coming to your closet. I'm coming to get what you got, whatever. Like she she sees that. I raised this beautiful woman and she has style, she has class, and I want that too. Because yeah. it wasn't, maybe it wasn't around when she, when she was younger. It, her wanting to emulate that, I love it because now she sees that, she sees what she did, basically. Right. So. I, I want to add a few things about like what you, what, what, where parents can fail their kids. I think not being affectionate with their kids or not telling your kids how much you're proud of them. You know, making your kids feel like they're never good enough is a way to show that you're not setting your, your child up to have a healthy sense of self. Mm. I would also say that, like, if you're a single parent and you're bringing too many different men or women around your kid, you're teaching your kid that relationships are not something that can have one person or have any type of longevity. You're, you're, you're bringing all these people around your kids. Maybe you're a promiscuous parent, maybe you're not. But what kind of example are you setting to your child? If they keep on seeing you having all these relationships, and I know, I know, some people say, Uncle "Well, Fred's and, and Uncle Tony's yeah. and, and not in the family." You know, I know that some parents will say, "Well, I can do what I want. My child has it." But you have to understand too. You know, your child is learning from you. They're very susceptible to seeing you in different different relationships, and you're teaching them those things. Um, substance abuse around your kids. There's studies that show that if a child grows up in a, a home that has substance abuse, they are 
way more likely to engage in substance abuse use at, into their adulthood. It's like, oh, well, whenever my, my parent got um, stressed out, they would always drink, you know? And so you're teaching your child these coping mechanisms. I'm sure some people are gonna get pissed when they hear that, but you know, that's not my problem. Like, it's the reality. And you have to be understanding that your child is looking at everything you're doing and they're going, to, that's their foundation for how they're going to be in, if they're in the parental role. I obviously think child abuse is problematic. There's a difference between disciplining your child and there's a difference between, oh, I'm trying to break their neck. Right, or you're, you're spanking them for everything. So now they're afraid of you. And I think respect is important, but your child shouldn't be afraid of you when they're wetting the bed because that's a trauma response sometimes. Mm -hmm. Or they're, they're, they're afraid to speak up because they feel like you're going to put them down. That's yeah. not good at all. Um, I don't know, do you have any? Um, I, when you were saying about substance abuse, about um, you doing that around your kid, even worse, you allowing your kid to do that with you. Oh my God. Like, there, there, I've seen videos of four-year-olds smoking and little girls twerking. It's like, it's, it's, it's ridiculous. Yeah, that's awful. That's awful. Um, what else? It's, it's a lot. There's a lot. Yeah, there's a lot. I'm, I'm really just trying to think because there's so many that I have. Oh, um, there, I, don't, I also don't like the situations where moms have boyfriends and they have like little girls and they know that the little girls are being abused mm. by their boyfriends and the moms say nothing. That makes me so upset. Blood boil. That, like, I'm literally getting so upset right now thinking about that. And the little girls are coming to the mom and the mom's like, Oh, but you allowed it. There, there's several cases where there was one on TikTok. Remember the little girl who was saying that um, the mom's boyfriend was touching her, and I yes, think I did see that one. Yeah, yeah, and they were, they were. There was footage of her screaming because they weren't believing what she was saying. And the mom, the grandma, and the, the mom's um, boyfriend, they were abusing this girl. They were the, the boyfriend was molesting this girl, and the mom was just completely oblivious. They were almost victim blaming the girl, and it's like. And not all because people have the genitalia and they're a certain age does not mean they should have kids. I said it. Not every human being needs to be a parent mm. because there's so many cases. I have a sociology minor and when I was studying with my minor, I, we read a lot about child abuse cases and, and so forth. And there's so many cases where children are being abused at young ages and they're not getting the help because the parents are, you know, obviously nobody's telling on the parents. So no one's separating these kids from their parents. But... There should be like a test to where parents should take them or people who want to be parents should take them and they should say, okay, you're fit to be a parent, you're not. Because a lot of people want to have kids and they're messing these kids up. Mm. That's horrendous to me. Yeah. And you know, child abuse is never okay. You know, if you know anybody who's going through it or you, if you are going through it, there is help. There Absolutely. is help out there. So. And, and for substance abuse as well, like that's not something that I play with. If you know someone who's struggling, there are numbers out there that you can call, guys, do not hesitate because sometimes people are just trying to deal with their own demons and that's the only way they know how. Mm -hmm. so. so this has been a real hearty episode. Um, we talked a lot about of things that could be done that could actually mess some people, mess some kids up that turn into adults and, and we got, like I said, we have to deal with them in this society, so. Yeah. And there's a lot more that we can talk about, but I feel like maybe that'll be another episode in the yeah, future, you know. definitely agree. So you guys, thank you so much for tuning in, and we will see you next time.